Uh, hello everyone and well, uh, this is another video. Actually this is going to be a remake of one of my previous videos where I demonstrated how to create a chat application using Indie or Internet Direct TCP client server components. Uh, in this video I'm going to expand it a little bit and show uh, some additional examples uh, just for you to uh, realize uh, how this uh, TCP IP uh, communication is, is performed here using the Internet Direct components. Uh, this is the first example. Uh, we have a simple client-server communication where a client sends two numbers as a request and when clicking the button uh, he sends them, those two numbers and uh, waits for the server to respond with uh, some of those two numbers. Uh, it's a very simple example just to demonstrate, uh, like I said, how this uh, communication is really performed. Uh, you can find these client and server components here by typing TCP and you will have here under in the clients you have the TID TCP client and under in the servers you have TID TCP server component uh, so you place them both here uh, in order uh, for them to communicate uh, for the TCP client TCP server to communicate TCP client must know the IP address of the server so uh, that's the uh, address where the server uh, is located meaning the machine that's the host property IP address and the uh, client also needs to know the port where the server is listening. In this case, this is the 12345, not very original, it's just for demonstration purposes, but when you will be creating your own uh, servers, uh, try to use some random port in order uh, to avoid conflict with some other possible application that is using the same port. Okay, so like I said, client needs to know the host IP address and the port number. and uh, now let's let's start with the client. So when I click uh, get some, what happens is I define the host IP address and the port. Uh, in this case, port is already defined in the object inspector here. But if you want to define it inside the code, this is how you do it. It's very simple. And TCP is a, a connection protocol. Uh, before sending any request, you need to, or first you need to connect to the server and once everything is done, disconnect. Okay, and uh, how to send something to the server? In our case, we want to send two numbers, first and second number. We uh, use the socket write method. And uh, as you can see, a write, uh, write is very flexible. You can send uh, pretty much what, whatever you want here. Uh, some arrays, uh, unsigned values, integer, uh, streams, etc. And uh, uh, actually, uh, these, uh, in this case, we are uh, sending two numbers, so it's text to int, but you can send uh, more complicated things like files, uh, which are streams. There is actually an example on my channel that demonstrates how to, uh, uh, how to send a screenshot uh, 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 so we do a screenshot on some other computer and send it to us uh, by network using the TCP IP uh, in the components and it's done by using streams so you can check that example as well. But like I said, this is a very simple example uh, where a client connects, sends two numbers using the right method and once it sends two numbers, it waits for a client to respond and how does it wait? By using the read method. So in this case, it's a, a read uh, int uh, 32, but you can uh, uh, read line, you can uh, read string, etc. So there are many possibilities. Uh, when you hit this uh, line of code, uh, your application, meaning the client application, can be frozen uh, until uh, a response from the server arrives. And that's what you need to be aware of. And once uh, that server from the once that response from the server arrives, uh, it will be uh, saved in this uh, sum and displayed in the e-server response component, which is this one here. Okay, so that, that's what the client does. It connects, sends two numbers. Okay, this is the first and second number, and then waits for a response. Now let's see the server side. When I click on the server side, what you need to do, uh, you need to, well, you, it's uh, uh, recommended that you define uh, the default port. And, but what's important is that you define the bindings here. When I click on these three dots and click new, 
uh, it will automatically suggest the, uh, this port because it's the default port and it will automatically suggest uh, these four zeros which pretty much means I listen for any request from any network okay and click active uh, once you click active your server uh, will start listening for the requests once the application starts each TCP server uh, has uh, one uh, event that needs to be implemented. This is uh, the on execute event. Uh, this event is executed uh, each time uh, when a, a, a request from a client arrives. And you need to implement this, uh, otherwise, your server won't work right. So, if I double click here, uh, what happens on the server side? Well, uh, now let's check the client. Client connected, okay, and he sent two numbers. Then server, what he does, he reads those two numbers. Okay, and server waits for the response uh, from the server, and then server writes that response to the client. As you can see, server, uh, client and server needs to be synchronized in, in, uh, in order of their requests and response, because if they are not synchronized, uh, then you'll have some infinite loop or, or wait uh, or, or something like that. Uh, if, if your application just froze,s uh, that's probably one of the reasons why it happened. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's very simple uh, because each time client sends something, uh, server will uh, hit the on execute event. And what's important is to say that uh, Indy components uh, use multi training so each request from a client will be uh, handled in a separate thread. Uh, so this uh, portion of code needs to be uh, uh, synchronized if you are using, uh, if you are going to uh, do some uh, user, uh, graphic user interface updates from inside the thread. I'll, I'll show that in, in the second example. And um, well, I hope now you understand how this example works because it's very simple. Uh, so when I click the, uh, the button, uh, we are connecting to the uh, server. We are sending two numbers using the write method. Uh, server reads those two numbers and uh, uh, sends a response to the client and client reads that response and shows it and disconnects. Okay. That's that's practically very simple, but it demonstrated it just demonstrates the basic request and response communication. Now let's see. Uh, this is the chat example that I have uh, demonstrated in, in, in that first video, but I'm going to uh, show it now again, and I'm going to expand it. Uh, when I click the run uh, and I click send, what happens is uh, I have a host that is the second person that I want to talk to and uh, when I click send I'm sending that message to that person in this case I'm talking to my own self so uh, I, I got the message uh, here in my list box uh, client and server let's see how uh, they work uh, they are connected by using the same port okay and the host IP address is 127.0.0.1 as I'm talking to my uh, own self uh, on, on my own computer but if I would run this application, for example, uh, here and on a, one other computer, then I would, uh, as a host, I would specify the IP address of that other computer, and uh, that person there would specify my IP address. And when I would click send, uh, he will uh, he would receive that message, and when he would click send, I would receive his message. Uh, but how does this work? Well, like I said, client and server are both connected using the same port. So that must be uh, uh, implemented. Uh, bindings server listens to that port from any network and active is true. Okay, so what happens when I click this send button? When I click it, uh, like I said, TCP is a connection protocol, meaning you need to connect. And in order to connect, you need to specify the host IP address and the port. And in this case, I didn't use the write method, but I uh, use the write line method. And uh, that method is uh, used when you want to send, for example, a, a, a text line. Very simple, right? And uh, I sent a text line and disconnect. And what server does, it uh, receives that. So uh, that 
text line. As you can see, here I send a line of text, here I read a line of text. And we have a synchronize here. So this is uh, what's important because our server, this onExecute method, is uh, executed in a separate thread. So each client, when he sends some request to the server, uh, his request will be handled in a separate thread. Each execute uh, will happen in a separate thread. And if, if that execute uh, updates something on a user interface, that uh, update must be synchronized, because updating a uh, user interface from inside the thread is not a thread safe action. And that's why we have used uh, here uh, anonymous uh, Lambda method that uh, uses the thread synchronize to syn synchronize uh, uh, this action here. And of course this action below. And that's very important if you are uh, updating graphic user interface from inside the thread, you should always use synchronize. Okay, and now what happens? Uh, let's see, client connects, sends a line of text. But uh, notice that in this case, uh, uh, client doesn't uh, expect any answer. He just sends the, the text to the server. And that server, when he gets that text, he just displays it in a list box, but using synchronize, so that it is uh, thread safe. And as you can, see, as you can see, it's very uh, small amount of code. It's very simple. You just need to follow uh, the logic of the TCP. Okay. The problem with this example is that I can only chat with one person because I can only define one host. But what if I want to uh, chat with multiple person, uh, multiple persons? So uh, more people. Let's say that we have a, we want to create a chat room where we have ten people and once one person sends a message that everyone in the chat room receives that message, right? Uh, in order to do that, I have expanded this example with uh, two separate applications. One is a chat client and one is a chat server. And if I open the client here, uh, now how does that work? Uh, I have a chat server here as well. Uh, when I run the client, uh, and when I click connect, I will connect to a central server, okay, and that central server uh, will, so when I send a message, that central server will, will receive that message and forward that message to all connected clients. And that is my idea. My idea is not like in the first case uh, to send that message directly to one client. Instead, I'm sending it to a central server and then that central server will forward that message to each client that is connected to the server. And how to do it? So when I click this uh, connect button, I specify host or chat server IP address and I try to connect it. Okay. And when I go to the server, I have here a server component and what happens when client connects? As you can see, we have events on the server side on connect on uh, disconnect. And when I, when client connects, I am adding his IP address to the list. Also, when client disconnects, I am removing his IP address from the list. And uh, let's just demonstrate that here. So this is the server running, and this is one of the clients. When I click connect, uh, the IP address of that client was. Uh, is now here in the list of the clients uh, at the chat server, okay? Because this uh, <coughs> event triggered and it added that uh, peer IP address to the list box one. Now what happens is when I say test and send, that message was sent to this server and then that server uh, forwarded that message to all clients in the list and there is only one client and that is the very same client that sent the message actually and uh, once that server forwarded that message here the server inside this client showed that message inside this uh, list box how did he do that as you can see i have uh, here uh, okay where is the client so I have a server and a client. Client is the one that will send the message to the central server. 
and once central server forwards that message it will be received by this server okay and I have here so the central server will uh, return that message to that client and it will be uh, displayed in the list box by using synchronize and the uh, chat server as you can see what happens when you send something to the chat server so this is the message that uh, was sent by one of the clients and the idea is that if I click here send this message was sent here and now I want to forward that message to each of the clients that are connected to this server uh, first we uh, read the message itself and then we have created a list of all currently connected clients and this list uh, that, that's actually that so uh, that's the list of currently connected clients to this server and we go through all of that clients that are currently connected and we uh, try to connect to their server and using the right line we forward that message to them so we are just going through each of the clients in the list and, and send that message to them and we update that message inside our server list box I hope you now you understand the difference between the first and the second example because in the first example uh, of this chat you can only chat with one person uh, which uh, because you only can define one host but in the second example uh, we are actually chatting with the chat server we are sending the chat server the message and then he just forwards it to everyone in, in the list by, by using the, the uh, code here uh, I hope uh, that you now saw uh, and understood these examples because they are very simple I, I don't think it's uh, very complicated TCP IP is uh, by default very easy and uh, I hope now that you are able to start developing something on your own uh, just remember that you always need to watch out for this uh, on the execute method because it's uh, performed in a separate thread so if you are uh, updating user interface from it use a um, synchronized method or uh, some other approach uh, to make it thread safe uh, thank you for watching and well uh, see you again